a, you know, a variety of complex reactions. And so the, the name of the reaction is indicated. The types of microbes that undergo the reaction is also listed here and there. And so I want you to you know, have a nice holistic view of this nitrogen cycle. We could start in the middle with the simplest form, nitrogen gas, which is pretty abundant, not pretty, is the most abundant gas in the atmosphere. And so microbes can actually fix nitrogen. Azotobacter species, clostridium species, some photosynthetic bacteria can actually fix nitrogen, where they grab this n, this n triple bond end mo n molecule and can fix it into organic nitrogen in tissue, which is a hugely important process. Um, some of these microbes, like azotobacter, are found in the soil. Clostridium is a soil bacterium. Photosynthetic bacteria are also soil bacteria. But there's microbes that intimately associate with plant tissue and give, those, give that plant tissue the ability to um, stockpile nitrogen by having that little symbiont associated with them. So it's a really neat association. The organic nitrogen, then, can be um, mineralized essentially to ammonia as I just mentioned and then this simpler form of, of nitrogen can can undergo nitrification so certain microbes like nitrosomonas or nitrosococcus um, can min can nitrify this and so when you see an open bar like this that's an aerobic process so nitrification is an aerobic process in which in which um, ammonia is oxidized to nitrite and then nitrite is further oxidized to nitrate. And so different kinds of microbes can do different series, different sets of, of um, um, nitrifying reactions. So a buildup of nitrate in the environment is great for the plants, is good for microbes, and so lots of microbes can utilize this nitrate as a source of as a source of nitrogen, as a um, as a as an electron acceptor primarily. And so when a microbe uses this as an electron acceptor, in the same way that you and I would use oxygen as a terminal electron acceptor in our metabolism, many microbes can use this instead of oxygen as an electron acceptor. So imagine this guy, this, you know, these microbes that can denitrify will use this as an electron acceptor and pass electrons to it from their metabolism to keep them, to keep them alive. The, um, so they're basically breathing nitrate, like we are breathing oxygen. And so denitrification results in the, the restoration of the nitrogen pool. It's kind of a bad process in a way because, <laughs> you know, again, this is a nutrient for plants. And if, if bacteria get a hold of it and denitrify it, they, they steal it from the plants. But, so plants and bacteria that denitrify are often in, are most likely in competition with one another. Some of the nitrate can undergo assimilatory nitrate reduction by many kinds of bacteria where they can assimilate this nitrogen into organics. And then some of this stuff, you know, and, and these dark purple bars mean that, they're, that these reactions are anaerobic or not oxygen requiring. And so the um, nitrate in this particular case can be reduced all the way down to ammonia anaerobically by certain microbes. And then these, these kind of stippled bars represent um, oxygen independent reactions. They can be, well, I should say they're oxygen or they can be oxygenic, or, I'm sorry, they can be aerobic or anaerobic. So I've broken into individual pieces of the nitrogen cycle into these next slides. So nitrogen fixation, as I said, is the reduction of nitrogen to um, organic nitrogen. It's pretty unique to prokaryotes. I've, there's no other microbes that do it. Um, it requires an expenditure of energy for sure. As, you know, obviously you need a um, you need a lot of energy to bust that N triple bond N in in nitrogen, and um, and typically an anaerobic response because uh, environment because the um, en main enzyme that splits the nitrogen doesn't function in the presence of oxygen. What's interesting is it can be carried out by aerobic or anaerobic bacteria, but the bacteria that are aerobic have to really protect their key enzyme, nitrogenase. And again, nitrogenase is the enzyme that splits nitrogen. Um, <clears throat> the product of, of nitrogen fixation is ammonia, essentially. And again, that's shown in the, in the diagram that I just, the figure that I just showed you, the cycle. Nitrification is the deamination, can come from the deamination of amino acids. Um, and so, um, in this particular case, you have uh, um, the, the 
uh, imagine you have an amino acid with, with an amino group and the microbe can pluck the amino group off and then undergo a process called, and then either it or other microbes can undergo a process called nitrification. And so the removed amino group can then be oxidized to nitrate, and that's nitrification. The, um, <clears throat> the nitrate then can undergo two different things. And so, you know, you may want to cross-reference it to here because we're right here now. <laughs> We've just gone from here to here to here, and now we're sitting here in that particular slide that I'm on. So you, wanna, you may want to go back and forth to look at that. So here's our nitrate after nitrification. And so the nitrate can be assimilated into where it's incorporated into organic nitrogen or dissimilated where it's used as an electron acceptor and then just turned into nitrogen gas. And so these processes are, are really important from an ecological perspective. As I had already mentioned, nitrate is an important plant food. Um, just, you know, again, just look at any bag of fertilizer. You'll always see like potassium nitrate and so forth in there. But um, it's also used, it's also a useful way to um, detoxify these compounds from the environment, um, denitrification is. And so here's a scheme for using denitrification to remove nitrate from farm runoff that may cause problems such as dead zones in the Gulf of Mexico. So imagine you have a big farm over here with, with nitrogen hungry plants like corn. And imagine the farmer is, is adding tons of fertilizer full of nitrates and the plants only can eat so much of it and, and much of the nitrate leaches off into the surrounding rivers. And then those rivers can hook up to bigger rivers and ultimately um, to oceans and so forth, like the Gulf of Mexico. And if there's too much nutrient in the water, that can cause blooms of microorganisms to grow, which can then sap the oxygen and then can essentially kill fish and so forth. And that's why we get these dead zones. So one strategy for preventing that leaching is to put denitrifying bacteria into the soil in between the farm and the water so that the denitrifying bacteria will grab the nitrate and essentially reduce it to either nitrogen gas or, or nitrous oxide.